Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part 23 and it's the first steam test. You will notice that the engine's gone off my bench and it's now on the special stands at the Steam Workshop which are ideal for transporting steam locomotives from the workshop to the outside to test them. The weather's not so good today, it's on the points of rain so we're not right out in the middle of the yard. We've set up very close to the front door so that if it does rain I can put the camera inside. The first thing I'm going to do for this steam test is change the pressure gauge for a new one. I tried to repair the old one and it works. It gives £30 per square inch when you put £80 per square inch into it, which is not what I really want for a steam test. It's time to build the fire up and light it. I'm using charcoal soaked in paraffin. You can use small pieces of wood for lighting the fire, but it still needs to be soaked in some sort of combustible liquid. At this stage I'd just like to say, whatever you do, do not use gasoline, or as we call it in England, petrol. Paraffin, or kerosene, is ideal. In this initial steam test, I'm aiming for a small covering of charcoal all over the fire grate. And the charcoal itself may be enough to raise the temperature and boil the water to give me sufficient pressure to test everything. What I'm not going to do is fill the firebox up right to the top and get a raging inferno in there because don't forget, this engine is not fitted with a hand pump. The last shovelful of this charcoal and paraffin mixture is lit. As you can see, it's burning quite merrily on the shovel. And as I put the fiery contents of the shovel through the fire hole door, the rest of the charcoal and paraffin catches fire and it's time to connect the blower. Just to avoid confusion and people not knowing what I'm talking about, the blower is sat on the chimney. In this case, it's not being used as a blower as such, it's blowing to the outside atmosphere and it's sucking the air through the fire. Normally, after lighting the fire, I leave the fire hole door open for about half a minute, just to make sure everything's lit, and then I shut the fire hole door. If you leave the fire hole door open all the time, this is no good, because most of the air will be sucked in across the top of the fire. Shut the door, and the blower does its job and pulls air through the fire, which is what you need. With around £40 per square inch showing on the gauge, it's time to remove the electric blower and open the valve on the steam blower, which is on the turret. And what the steam blower does is let some steam through the hollow stay, which is a long tube that runs through the boiler, to the blower pipe or blower ring, which is in the smoke box, and this directs a jet of steam up the chimney, which draws the fire. All very clever. I've put a small amount of coal on the fire, and now it's time to open the regulator and see what happens. The drain cocks are open, and the engine's away. Well, it was. Now it won't go at all, and what's happening is... Oh, the blower's stopped working too, this is most curious. I've got a good idea what it is, I'll go into that in more detail later. But for the moment I have a situation. I have a steam locomotive, which won't work, and the blower which draws the fire won't work, which is possibly a good thing, because if the blower's not drawing the fire, it's not using any steam, so the water level's not going to go down in the water gauge very quickly, and also the fire's going to go out. You can clearly see in this clip, because the steam blower isn't working, I'm having to refit the electric blower to the chimney, because the pressure is dropping. Sometimes you have to do this if you make a mess of firing your steam locomotive. If the pressure gets down to about 10 psi, that's not enough pressure to make the steam blower work properly. So anyway, I've put the electric blower back on and I'm testing the safety valves. And, well, they're sort of working. One works better than the other, but that's not a massive problem. Currently, it's showing £40 per square inch on the gauge and I think it's time to test the injector. First of all, I'm checking that we have a steam feed. This is not the way to do it. You never open the steam valve first. You need to open the water valve first, which lets water through to the injector in order to cool it so that some condensation of the steam can take place. And as it turned out, the injector system on this engine doesn't work, it doesn't put water into the boiler. If the injector is too hot, or if the water supply from the side tanks to the injector is too warm, it won't work. In this system, the injector takes water from a tank behind the engine. The injector feed is not taken from the side tanks. You can see it clearly in this clip. What I'm doing here is opening the regulator fairly quickly to let a big blast of steam, although it's very low pressure, 
into the cylinders. And no, it's just blown up the chimney, so the water level's dropping and it's time to get rid of the fire. And as you can see here, because of the lack of any draft going up the chimney, the fire's gone out anyway. So it's a really good idea on the first steam test of an engine, whether it be a stationary engine or a locomotive, not to aim for a massive fire, because this went out quickly. Had the fire been a raging inferno with so little water now in the gauge glass, that would have been a problem. Back in the workshop now, and this is the blower ring. You can clearly see in this clip the three holes in the pipe where the jets of steam come from. And these three small holes were fully blocked. All I did to clear it was heat up the entire assembly with the blowtorch. And that cleared the holes. So, I wonder why it got blocked up. This is getting to be a bit of a puzzle. And why won't the engine go? It runs perfectly well under compressed air. It runs very well indeed. And it runs up and down the bench very freely as you can see here. I think I know what the problem is. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. No, 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 I'm still here. As this engine doesn't have a blowdown valve and furthermore it's been stood idle for maybe 20 years or more, my guess is that there's quite a lot of residue in the boiler and it's sat there for quite a few years. That is, until I filled the boiler with water and left it for a few days. So once I started to boil the water, all of this residue must have been sat on top of the water so as soon as I turned the blower valve, the steam, complete with this residue because the boiler is priming and it's like a bit of a water spout, went down the pipe and blocked up the blower. Similarly, as I opened the regulator, the steam with badly contaminated water entered the steam chests and this boiler residue got underneath the slide valves on their seats, which in turn allowed the steam to go straight to the exhaust. I have seen this before, it's fairly common. The clue was in what was happening when the steam went up the chimney. It wasn't just steam that went up the chimney, it was water, which showed me that the boiler was priming very badly, which is usually due to contamination in the water. So how did I fix it? Well, I ran the engine up and down the bench by hand quite a lot of times. Then I connected a compressed air supply to the engine and ran the engine up and down the bench quite a lot of times. And very slowly, some power started to develop and then all of a sudden, the engine had full power and nearly ran off the bench. So once I got this full power back, I put it on the rolling road and here it is running. And it's running well. What I intend to do is to fit a blowdown valve. After I made the last video, I was told by a couple of viewers that there was some water leaking from behind the rear wheel. Oh, I didn't know that. That was sarcasm. I only saw it when it was happening and then I saw it when I edited the video, which took about an hour. Then I saw it when I was voicing over the video, which took about two hours. But thanks anyway for pointing it out. I don't have all the answers, but I know what that was. At some stage of its life, this engine must have had a hand pump and there was a third clack. This is fitted into a bush in the boiler, low down on the left hand side, where the water was coming from. But as I'm going to fit a proper blow down valve into this bush in the boiler, I felt that I didn't need to mention it until I actually fit the blowdown valve. I've just been adjusting the mechanical lubricator because it kept sticking. Now it's not sticking, it's going all the way around. How do you do that? Well, the spring on one of the paws was a bit weak, so I shortened it, and now the paw puts a bit more pressure on the ratchet wheel, and it works fine. Because of my accent, I will put the words on screen so you know what they are. The adjustment of these ratchet-type mechanical lubricators is a bit of a black art. You have to adjust the lock nuts to put just enough pressure on the arm that goes back and forth and operates the lubricator. Too much pressure and it won't work. Too little pressure and it won't work either. But it's working fine now. This is what's left of the coal that I took out of the firebox. And this is a fire grate from within the firebox. Normally when running a miniature steam locomotive and you drop the fire, all you normally see is ash and clinker. But this is largely unburnt coal with a bit of charcoal because the fire, in this case, was not fully lit, and it was a good thing. This is the injector that didn't work, so I'm going to treat the engine to a brand new one, I think. I neglected to mention or demonstrate the fact that the original whistle that was fitted to the engine was terrible. It just made a wheezy sort of noise, so I found this one that was in a drawer at the steam workshop. I made a fitting for this because you can't just have the whistle dangling loose and you can see clearly how the fitting fixes to the frames with a longer bolt. Tomorrow is Saturday morning, so I think that it's a trip to Blackgate's engineering 
to buy a blowdown valve and a new injector. I'm also going to Blackgate's because some parts that I've ordered have arrived. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the kind viewers who sent me Blackgate's gift vouchers. I use the vouchers to buy something that I'm going to feature in a video very shortly and you'll find that interesting. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.